Welcome to The Decision from Nashville EO, where you will hear the rest of the story after tough decisions were made by entrepreneurs who faced adversity and lived to tell about it. Welcome to The Decision, a podcast by EO Nashville for and by entrepreneurs. Uh, we're here to talk about the difficult decisions that we make in our businesses. Uh, we're here to share wisdom and to help other entrepreneurs uh, through those experiences that we share. Uh, I'm Eric Jackson, uh, co-host with my partner in crime, Mr. Robert Hartline, and uh, who's also a fellow entrepreneur and EO Nashville member. Robert, how are you today? I am doing excellent. Uh, so excited hey. to have you aboard uh, with us today as president, Mike Rustic. I see. I always screw that up. Tell us uh, this perfect intro. Per perfect intro, huh? Tell Let's the story. It. Story. Well, if you ever want to know how I pronounce my last name, you have to go back to Grandma Rustic. <laughs> it's see, the story. Yeah. Okay. I, go ahead. Go <laughs> it's ahead. the story of eighty-something-year-old grandmothers and cheesy punchlines. Because there was one time when somebody was asking me how to pronounce my last name and my business partner and I went back and forth of how do you spell rusticy phonetically so we could communicate this over email. And we argued and argued and argued and didn't know what we were talking about. We had, although we pretended like we remembered fifth grade English class, but then uh, this happened to be right before Thanksgiving. So I go home to a gathering of 20 something loud Italian rusticies and throw out this same question after dinner. How do you pronounce or how do you spell rusticy phonetically? Everybody argues, there's hand waving, there's stuff flying, everybody's <laughs> got their opinions, as you can imagine, until we find the quiet down and Grandma Rusty pipes up. Grandma Rusty being quiet this whole time, which is unusual because Grandma Rusty doesn't keep her opinions to herself. And she's a retired English teacher. So you think she's going to have the answer to this. And she does. She nails it. She goes, guys, if anybody ever asks you how to pronounce Rusty, you just tell them that Rusty rhymes with ecstasy. I was like, where were you when I was 19, Grandma? I would have used that line over and over and over again. And now you and the listeners will never forget how to pronounce Rusticy. So thank you for well, the opportunity well, to share well, that. to be honest with you, uh, I was told this story and I still screwed up your last name. So uh, uh, it's one of the hangups that I have when in doing this podcast. I get so caught up in my head uh, with people's names. I don't know what it is. It's just something that, I, it's, it's my thing I'm struggling with. You're, always. I, I'm good with names. You're awesome with questions. So thanks for being here, Mike Ecstasy. Uh, <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, this is beautiful. You know, one of the reasons that we wanted to have you, other than the fact that you're a kick-ass member of EO, you are the president of our chapter now, leading 345 of these nutcases as EO members. And so that has got to be a hell of a responsibility. It, it is, it a, is it a unique and humbling responsibility and challenge? It is both uh, terrifying to try to be a leader amongst leaders, but also pretty inspiring and pretty great to have such amazing, um, amazing people doing things and getting stuff done. I'm shocked. It's been so, it's such a refreshing change to be able to just throw big initiatives out on the table and people come back and they're doing them and they're getting them done and getting them better done better than I could ever imagine. So it's really an honor and really a privilege. And it's a, it's a unique challenge to learn how to lead a group of volunteers who don't have enough time when the only tools at my disposal are carrots and no sticks. Mm. So it's a really unique and interesting opportunity that's already led to a lot of growth, even though I'm only just, uh, just barely starting my term. P part of, um, as communication um, is my mission is to bring more core values into season two. I want to make sure that we're talking about our core values. We're more aware of our core values and that is trust and respect. Thirst for learning, think big, be bold and together we grow. Um, can you talk about how those resonate for you? Yeah. You know, they're, they're really just the core of who we are, obviously. And you know, if I want to summarize them for, you know, trust and respect. That's, that's our special skill in EO is that we scale trust. Uh, but the way that it really manifests itself, which we don't do small talk very well, do we? Mm. You know, a conversation, I can pick up a conversation with eight, any of the 18,000 EO words there are globally. And it's where are you from? What's your business? And how can I help you? And what do we have to learn from each other? Let's go deep. Let's find something to learn about. And that's so, so, so powerful. But it's, enabled by that just fundamental trust that I can be vulnerable with you. I can share with you. 
uh, which is what, you know, some of the things you're bringing out in that, this podcast, you see how powerful that is. Mm. And, and, and thirst for learning, how does that show up for, for you? And as, as, as a president in the, in the, in the chapter, what, how do you, how do you and foster more of that? Yeah. I don't have to foster it. Cause it's just who we are yeah. in general. It's a, but even you know, the act of being president is an opportunity to learn. I'm doing it for the opportunity to learn, to grow. And, you know, in, in my company, I always, um, I never would hire somebody who thought they had it all figured out. You know, A players, the really great people, they want to surround themselves with A pluses so they can learn. They always realize how much they don't know. It's the, it's the B players who surround themselves with C players so they make themselves look good. And, uh, you know, EO is just filled with all of that, you know, A player mentality of I just want to surround myself with people I can learn and grow from. And, it, you know, it's almost a curse. We can never stop getting better, never be satisfied with the status quo. It's funny. You mentioned that. It reminds me um, when I was the uh, co-chair with Alan Young doing membership. And, you know, we, we, we did a pretty good job, I think, of getting up and telling the EO story. But I always made a point to remind people that. If you if you're sitting here in this event and you think you've already got all these things figured out and you don't need to learn anything else, then enjoy the rest of your lunch and be on your way because EO is not going to be for you because we're constantly pushed and challenged to learn in forum, in events that we have. It's just a nonstop thing. It's a beautiful part of EO. Hey, I was at a, uh, a new member event and uh, it was me and another member and this new potential member. and. They were the smartest people in the room. Like they literally knew all the answers and knew all, you know, all the answers to the test. And me and the other entrepreneur are like, nope, not going to make it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and it was not curious enough, you know, and I think, I think, uh, I think it's part of what we, we look for when we get in, when we get to talking to other entrepreneurs, we're not talking about, you know, how we're winning necessarily we're talking about life you know we're talking about what is it like to raise teenage kids or what is it like to um struggle you know and getting those deep connections with people um is really what i feel like we are thirsty for yeah which brings us right to our next value of together we grow you know there's no book you can read to go learn how to build and grow and scale a company in an innovative way the only people that we have to learn from are each other. We can only learn from each other's experiences. And then, you know, the great part about EO is we have hundreds of people locally, thousands of people throughout the world who are willing to go on that journey with us and to realize that um, we don't know it all and that we only have each other to learn from. If, if there's something we're reading, there's lots of great stuff out there, but if it's in a textbook, it's probably obsolete by the time you get to it. If you're really trying to be on the cutting edge of something. Mm, mm, very true. Um, Reminds me of our, uh, uh, one of our previous guests, uh, Matt Cruz, who's, uh, uh, the CEO of the big machine music city grand prix. And, uh, he admitted several times, you know, I, like, I don't know how to do this. I just kind of figured out as we go. And that's the sort of thing that we do. And the beautiful thing is, is we've got on other entrepreneurs around us that can, can, can help make that happen. I, as a matter of fact, I got a call, uh, immediately after this, one of my forum mates wants to pick my brain about some marketing stuff. I'm like, great. That's perfect. That's exactly what we'll use this for. And it's not only that, it's also uh, to be inspired by, you know, our core values of think big and be bold. Uh, sometimes if you are in a group of people with that one person, we all been in that group where he's like, doing shit. You know, he's doing that. Are you kidding me? And you're driving home and you're going, why can't I do that? Like, I mean, we, sometimes we need a little spark of inspiration to realize that we could do something bold and something big. Um, how does that show up in your, in your position as president? Because we have a strategic plan and part of that is that next level. How do we, what is the next level for what you want to do in your presidency? That's a great question. And we're figuring that out as we go. Cause yeah, like you said, we, we did put together a strategic plan that is very much trying to take advantage of the fact that we are the third largest EO chapter in the world and trying to reinvent what it means to be a part of EO. And you know, I don't think we have any definitive answers just yet, but it's very much you know a part of our culture. And it's something that we do get inspired to do by the people that we are around. My, you know, my experience with that was when I had first joined EO, the uh, 
president at the time was a guy named Clint Smith that you guys all know and love. Mm-hmm. But to me at that time, I had a small co- software company that wanted to be Clint's company and but getting the opportunity to, you know, I remember seeing him on stage trying to corral all of us because he was president at the time. And he just sang some goofy song and I got to know him and I realized, you know, he's just as big of a doofus as I am. If, <laughs> if, if Clint can do this, there's no reason whatsoever that I can't do this. And it set me on an entirely different um, course mentally. Uh, it's just one of many you know, experiences we've had in, in EO that's led me down that road. But, you know, which is, which is really seeing yourself in others. And, and that's what EO is all about. Like when you see the, the quirky, the uncomfortable, the, the, the somewhat crazy, right? Um, in someone else and you're like, wow, that is me. Oh, wow. It's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest gifts of forum is walking into a room with eight people who all are perfect on Facebook. From outside, they look like they have it all together and perfect. And you realize that every single one of them has their, their we cuss on podcasts. Yeah, I guess every, we can. every single one of them has their shit. Oh, and they've got yeah. something going on. And you know, nobody's nobody's Facebook perfect. And the closer you are to Facebook perfect, the least like you are to be perfect in real life. That vulnerability, that understanding is a, a big inspiration to overcome a lot of our um, imposter syndromes and insecurities and realize that there's absolutely nothing stopping us from being as bold or successful as anybody else in the world. So here's a forward thinking question. It is a year and a half from today and you're looking back at your, at your presidency. What are you proud of? I hope to be proud of the work of the board and the initiatives that they've accomplished. You know, really my job is to be a leader of leaders and to set strategic direction and help people to execute it. And so um, I'm, I love the, uh, I love the saying, you, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credits. And so I really look forward to seeing the success that others deliver to this organization. If I, if I get to accomplish one big thing, it would be to foster more intimacy and connection amongst our members because the magic of this organization happens in small groups when we get together, when we connect and connect deeply beyond just, you know, superficial um, superficial connection. We can have those real exchanges of experience and information and lessons learned. Those, those, every one of those conversations has the opportunity to profoundly alter and affect very positively the direction of each of our members. And so I'm hoping to find ways to take 340, 45 people and, you know, whittle it down to make it feel like more and more small moments of very intimate connections. Mm, Very well said. I just recently did moderator training with Anna Birch and it changed my whole outlook on what the 5% is. And, you know, I, I've been meaning to even talk to the board about this, like members, you should go to moderator train. I don't care if you're not a moderator, that's a deeper experience, especially if you've been an EO member for a long time, it's, it's time for a refresher. You may not be aware of what the power of that 5% can be. Yeah, um, it's it's nice to also know what the job of the moderator is, even if you are not going to be moderator ever. Like we know those people yeah. that we're probably not going to turn the mod- <laughs> It's one of those EO <laughs> secrets. That guy's never going to be moderator. But it's nice for them to know what that experience is like to be able to to at least see their shoes, maybe not walk in them, but to to be able to to bring value to the other members of the forum. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. If you're, if you are, if you're a member and you haven't been to moderator training, go do it. Now we're on our path to a big 500, aren't we? It seems that way. If we continue to grow at our current pace in three years, we'll be at 500 members, which is a bit hard to, hard to fathom. Well, the, you know, having 500 members in a town like this, the, the influence that we have on um, and the, really the business landscape uh, is, I think, really interesting. I mean, how, how do we have more of a presence in, in Nashville than we do today? What, what, what do you think that we need to do as members uh, to let more people know about who we are? You know, that's a great question. I think EO often feels like the best kept secret in, uh, in Nashville and in the world. You know, we all Anybody who's in it, anybody who knows it is a, a raving fan, but it almost seems like something that's hard to explain. Mm. It's hard to, you know, that's one of the reasons we join EO is it's hard to explain our experience as entrepreneurs to our 
family and our friends who don't go through it and don't get it. And it feels even harder sometimes to explain to, you know, a, a friend who isn't another entrepreneur. Oh yeah. I go sit someplace every month and we get very vulnerable. No, it's not a cult. No, it's not therapy. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere in between over there and it's, pre, it's pretty magical, but, but I do think uh, we, we could do a better job of getting out in the community, connecting with other organizations that are fostering and improving entrepreneurship throughout, um, throughout the community, especially in you know, diverse communities uh, throughout the, uh, throughout the city. I think it'd be very important to reach out and to cast as wide of a net as possible to bring people into what has been, you know, a, a very life-changing and profound organization for so many of us. And, and as a reminder for someone's listening to this, that's not familiar with EO, talk about the requirements to come in. Sure. It's pretty simple to be a member of EO. You have to be the founder, co-founder, controlling shareholder of a business that does a million dollars in revenue or more. And you'd have to adhere to our core values. It's about that simple. Uh, we do have another program for businesses that are about 250000 in revenue all the way up to a million called Catalyst, which is designed to be kind of a, an accelerator, a fire hose of entrepreneurial education to help you get to that million dollar mark and give you a taste of the EO experience. You know, and that, that Catalyst program comes with um, mentorship. And, and for EO members, it's a real big honor to be able to be a mentor, because that's where we really start learning. Like teaching is learning. And when you have somebody that maybe a few years behind and you're teaching them, yeah, I guess the, 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 the path, right. You also look at yourself like, shit, I should, <laughs> I should be actually doing this. Not, not just like telling somebody, I, it, it does add some personal responsibility to it. Well, I think it goes even deeper than that. And Eric and I were moderated a couple Catalyst forums together. And those have been some of the best EO experiences that I've had. I come from the corporate training world professionally. And in, in that training world, there's just you know, a simple, um, simple saying, if you want to learn something, you watch one, you do one, you teach one. And as an EO member, the opportunity to teach one, to, you know, give back the act of teaching requires me to simplify and codify the knowledge in my head in a much more robust way than simply learning it for the first time or doing it. I've gotten as much out of just being forced to do that from a learning perspective as I have just about anything I've done in EO. Mm. What, what, uh, what would you say is the, uh, the best advice for a new EO member? To just jump in. I uh, don't, don't have any of that. Uh, don't be afraid to jump in. Don't feel any sort of uh, imposter syndrome or insecurities or social anxiety. You have 344, I guess, other people who are very eager to meet from you and learn from you. And you know, we, we all have that trust and respect. And we've all, I think, um, I think the longer you've been in, the more humbled you get, the more opportunities you have to be humbled by realizing how much you have to learn from somebody every stage of business and in growth and in you know, tenure of EO. Uh, so yeah, j j jump right in. Don't be afraid. This is, uh, as Ginger, our former president, like to say, this is a gym, not a spa. You're only going to get as much out of it as you put in. And there is, um, it's also kind of an all-you-can-eat smorgasbord. You can be a full-time EO or gorging yourself on all the experiences and knowledge over here. So, you know, bite off whatever, whatever you want to chew, whatever looks tasty. And of course, uh, every chair in the organization has a committee or supposed to so join a committee, you know, like I'm, I'm no longer on the board, uh, which feels weird, but, um, I told Samira, hey, you're not losing me. I'm going to continue to be on the communications committee and help with the podcast. So there's, there's a role for anybody out there. Really. So you get to be in the party and don't have to do all the work. Is yeah, that exactly. what you're I need to get in that. Game. I just sit in this room a couple times and run my mouth for three hours. You're doing this right. I got second to being president. <laughs> Hey, uh, I, I, I was going to warn you, but, you know, what can I do? I, I, I got to let you try it yourself. Was there any, uh, and this is, this is me actively trying to get you to be vulnerable. Was there any head trash around leading uh, this group? I mean, is it intimidating? I would perceive it would feel a little intimidating. Eight years ago, yes. It absolutely would have been intimidating. When it when the opportunity arose, I I'm, I'll be very honest with you. No, it was not intimidating. Um, it was more for me an assessment of does this fit with my current you know life goals and you know, priorities in my life at the moment. Uh, I, I, that a lot of that comes from having the opportunity to serve on the board and move, work up through roles of of more and more responsibility. 
and for realizing that even Clint Smith is as big of a doofus as I am, who's somebody I very much admire. And you know, the opportunity to talk to Eric and other past presidents about their experience and the, you know, the support of the uh, Samira and our entire um, chapter management team. Uh, it, uh, you know, it, we're, we're a really well-run, well-supported organization. So many people are here for me to you know, lean on and to have the support from that. I've uh, very honestly just looked at it as you know, a, a great opportunity and a great, a great challenge to give back to an organization that's given me so much. Mm. Mm. What, what would you recommend for, let's say that EO member that's become disconnected. Uh, maybe it's they're in a form that maybe they are not resonating with, or um, they're not coming to the events or um how do you get that person re-engaged? Like, what would you like to tell them? Uh, I'd like to tell them that you know, there's a lot to offer. There's a lot of different ways to be engaged in EO. Some people are forum junkies. They go to their forum meeting. They will ride or die with their forum mates and they don't come to any other events and they don't want to participate in leadership. And that's fine. And that's what they're getting out of it. That's great for them. And there's others who aren't in a forum who go to all of the events and are every single thing that they can possibly imagine. There are others who focus on the leadership and professional development and educational opportunities in EO. And so if you're the experience you're having isn't right for you and it's not working out for you, there are lots of other, lots of other ways to get value out of EO. But you know, the, the honest answer is I'm not going to push anybody. You know, this is an organization where we, we trust and respect people to make decisions on their own. I will share my experiences in EO. I'll shout from the rooftops about, you know, how much this organization has impacted my life and how it continues to affect me positively, even as I'm no longer running my companies anymore. Um, but, you know, we don't, we don't tell people what to do in EO. We, mm -hmm. we let them make their own decisions and respect them and give them the experience and wisdom that we have and hope that it can benefit them. Mm, good. So imagine for a moment, we had 344 members in a room. And you are addressing every single one of those about your mission for this year in your presidency. What would you like to tell them? I mean, let me let me cast my imagination back to last week. Last week <laughs> when we did top, that yes. at Top Golf at our all member meeting. Uh, the, the thing I want to tell them about my theme for the year, what I want to accomplish this year, we hinted at already a little bit with that notion of intimacy and connection. Um, as I was contemplating my theme for the year leading up to the start of my presidency. Uh, went through a long journey, but it, it was going to be intimacy. It was going to be how can we develop that connection, foster that one-on-one, -on -one, those deep, small group relationships. Um, intimacy was, it was really good. I had some, you know, head trash about how do we get, make sure that doesn't have sexual connotations with people. That's a whole different story. But, um, but then the covenant shooting happened here in Nashville. And there was, there was a collective gasp in our city and a collective desire to do something. How do we overcome this strategy together? How do we make the world a little bit better place? And, you know, I got, I got some messages from members with, you know, very um, passionate feelings. Um, my, my wife challenged me. She said, you know, you're, you're going to be the president of 350 of the most powerful people, not most powerful, very powerful people in Nashville. What are you going to do? And I said, well, we can't do anything. We're not a political organization. We're not going to take a stand on guns or anything along those lines. But then I, I realized that we do do something really, really well that is really, really vital for the world right now, which is we scale trust. We know how to come together and trust and respect and have hard conversations, have deep conversations about things that matter. And if we look at the world right now, I don't think any of the biggest problems that we face are related to the things on cable news or that people are shouting about on social media. I think the biggest problems we face are the fact that we can't talk about it. The fact that we can't have reasonable conversations that we can't just sit down as two respectful adults and talk about what are really complicated problems and issues in our world. But you know what? We do that really, really well in EO. We do it really well. And so my theme for the year is we is greater than they. When we're together, when we're unified, when we have that trust and respect for each other, we're so much stronger, so much better than we are when we're apart, when we're divided. And what I hope in EO is to foster that a whole lot this year, especially leading into an election year next year, which will be probably difficult for a lot of this country. And maybe, just maybe, we can set that example amongst ourselves, amongst our members, amongst our forums, and maybe we can scale that out and show our friends, show our family, show our businesses, and show the world a slightly better path. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, the, the connection piece is healing, you know, and, and, you know, just imagine if um, those that were lost, you know, that feel a need to lash out into the world and hurt people, if we can find them and bring them together, like, Hey, um, this is, I was once in this challenge as well. And this is, you're not alone, you know, come join us and, you know, be around us. And I mean, it just fosters that from not only when we do that, together is member to member that flows into the company. So I'm doing that to employee to employee and that employee does it with their family, to their family members, to their friends. And and it all spreads. It's not just us. It's not when we are doing a form experience, we are impacting the employees that work for us and their family. It, it, It flows through this. I mean, you know, there's a lot of love in my forum experience and a tremendous amount. And when I go to an NEO event and I see someone that's in another, uh, that I hadn't seen in a while, it's just great to spend that quality time in togetherness and that you're exactly right. Um, love that, um, initiative. Uh, thank you, Mike. Russ to see. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, giving this the insight of your new presidency. Excited to um, um, go on this journey with you uh, on the board. Thank you for um, uh, allowing me to be a part of that as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service and for the opportunity. Awesome. If you are an entrepreneur who's looking to belong together with a group such as EO Nashville, you can visit us at eonashville.com. We would love to hear uh, from you. Um, This will be a podcast called The Decision. You can find us. Please give us a rating on either Apple iTunes or Spotify and let us know how much you love us and spread the word for others to hear. Hope you have a good rest of the week. Thanks for listening to the Decision Podcast by Nashville EO. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.